Come, Holy Spirit, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. In Community in Common, poet Jay Holm reflects on the 2021 Vigil Arts Center, formerly St. John's Church, Scunthorpe. On a summer afternoon, the light's the same as it ever was. A golden flurry sun wash, a gloss of gravitas amidst the arches. And the reasons we come here are broadly the same. Seeking our truths in the beauty and pain of the things that we see but cannot quite say. The building moves on, but the meaning will stay. It's a service provided, no matter the reason, to show you your heart through the changing of seasons, in art or in sacrament, sculpture or a saint. A community thrives when it's given a space. Whether amidst these arches or in the confines of a Jerusalem upper room, the places the Spirit gathers us are monuments to every hope ever glimpsed, every prayer ever uttered, every meaning ever made. And it is within these monuments that the Spirit breathes new space for a holy community to thrive. Today we gather in homage to the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity. Spoiler alert, we'll talk about that next week. He's revealed in today's gospel as the advocate, heavenly comforter, the spirit of truth. And elsewhere, the spirit is wind or breath, fire or water or light, witness, guide, anointing, and giver of spiritual gifts. And as in today's portion in the Acts of the Apostles, the Spirit appends human expectations. So in today's account, the pilgrims are gathered in Jerusalem from throughout the surrounding region for the Feast of Weeks, known in Hebrew as Shavuot. We know it as Pentecost from the Greek of the New Testament. Now, later rabbinic Judaism, which developed in response to the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE, would commemorate Shavuot as the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. However, as D. Mark Davis observes, the origin of the Feast of Weeks, and also the practice during the time of the first disciples, is as a harvest festival, with particular commitments, as attested in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and in the 16th chapter of Deuteronomy. So these passages direct the Israelites to bring the first fruits of their harvest to God in the temple, and to observe the Feast of Weeks as an annual festival. Leviticus 23, 22 gives further instruction. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the alien. I am the Lord your God. Similarly, in Deuteronomy 16, the Israelites are commanded then to invite everyone to the feast, sons and daughters, male and female, slave and free, insider and outsider, orphan and widow, everyone. So given this context, a cosmopolitan crossroads city, a pilgrimage festival, and the scriptural precedent for inviting neighbors, it is unsurprising that there was a little bit of everyone gathered in that upper room. 
The building moves on, but the meaning will stay. What's astonishing is that this particular everyone was so filled with the divine presence that they had at the same time distinct experiences and common understanding. See, the Spirit reached each of the pilgrims in the upper room in a particular way, honoring their personhood, language, and culture, because there is no generic humanity for the Spirit to alight upon. The Spirit comes to us in and through all that makes us human, our history and beauty and pain, our gifts and challenges, our particular relationships. She breathes upon those and makes space in those dimensions. She animates, she transforms them for holy purposes, just as in the upper room. And yet, the Spirit works in such a way that none of these particularities or distinctions is ultimate. The Spirit working in us builds common understanding, and especially in times of confusion, upheaval, or discord. In the upper room, differences were not barriers. They were vehicles for God's self-revelation in human hearing and seeing and speaking. This extraordinary power of the Spirit should provide comfort to each of us but not too much comfort. The building moves on, but the meaning will stay. See, today's festival is also a festival of justice, one that may confound our expectations and append our sense of comfort. Because building common understanding means designing our lives, both personal and collective, in such a way that we who have much embrace and reflect the truth that everything that we are and everything that we have is a gift from God. And so we can conserve quite intentionally a portion of what might be ours for the last and the least. Returning to this portion from Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, of necessity, the Israelites would have left a portion of the harvest for the poor and the stranger before taking the first fruits to the temple. That is to say that our offerings, our recognition of God's own presence in the poor, and our, our commitment to the poor is inextricable from our offering to God. But this command is not about charity. It is, it's not about giving to the poor. It's about justice, building the commons, so that the poor and the stranger, the unhoused person sheltering in a tent on Ellis Street just blocks away, the undocumented migrate grilling hot dogs on the wharf a few blocks in another direction are expected to have a place on our land, to harvest from the vines that we have planted, to be nourished from our pantries and tables, because in the end, it is not ours. We are but stewards of the gifts of God. This commitment to stewardship of the gifts of God to the commons has deep roots in Anglican public theology, which looks to the congregation, that is, this community, as a locus of compassion and care for the whole neighborhood, not merely those who profess the same creed. And we are formed as these Anglican Christians in the waters of baptism where the Spirit descends powerfully, intensifying God's presence, anointing, endowing the newly baptized with gifts as members of Christ's body. And then we are formed, empowered again, week by week around this holy table where what is broken makes us whole, 
where a gleaned morsel prepares us for an eternal banquet. So as we join with these beautiful children preparing to be baptized, let us also renew our faith and ask the Spirit's power and guidance. As we continue to pray and break bread, let us give lavishly. Seek Christ in our neighbor, in their beauty and pain, and strive for a spacious, thriving commons of justice and peace to the glory of God. <laughs>